Welcome back to What Are Teen Oops with General Disturbance. This is the E25 or Enpicton 25. It's a tier 7 German premium tank destroyer. It's located on the south spawn of Proper Off Crew Encounter. And this one is under command of Beer Waller. And he's been playing a lot of this little tank destroyer recently. As you can see, it's got two marks of excellence and quite a few awards marked on the vehicle. Game on. Now, the Enviclum series was, a lot of people say, oh, it's the best design, or rather, a more um, technically uh, superior vehicle. Actually, no, it was actually a vehicle that was easier to build because it was simpler. Not because it was technically better, but it was actually easier to make. The Enviclum series was designed to be standardized designs that will work for all vehicles across the, the range. They had six designs in total, and it included the uh, E100, the big heavy tank, an E75, which is basically a version of the Tiger II upgraded, the E50, which was basically the upgrade of the Panther, and of course the E25, which was supposed to be the replacement for the Hetzer. Whoa, now we've been spotted, or have we? No, we haven't been spotted. And the reason we haven't been spotted is because this tank is actually extremely good camo. Much obliged. It's incredibly good camo. It's got very good mobility, very low profile. It's got a 75mm gun with very good penetration. I think you can see, even with the standard ammo, it's capable of doing 135 alpha, which is about right for a 75mm and it'll penetrate through 150 millimeters of armor which isn't a huge amount actually but the shell velocity is pretty good 925 so yes it has got decent fire rate as well that's one of the best things about it standard reload rate is 2.88 and well you can see the beer roll has got 225 so he's actually rocking those shells into the target but he didn't get a kill out of it but he did damage the gun of the enemy vehicle, so that's probably why he's not responding at the moment. And he's advanced a long way into enemy territory. Now he's found by proximity a VK. He doesn't get the kill, he actually gets the spotting. But now we've got an M10 RBFM, and he's starting to pen him, and he's out the game. And I don't think there's many enemy tanks left on this side of the map. And he's actually spotted a Nazlum way over the other side, and the PP. There's the Fifi. I didn't get the top of the turret though. And unfortunately, one of the bad things about this uh, little tank story is that it's not always hugely accurate. It can sometimes have a little disbursement. But it's got a very high DPM, which means it can pump out those shells very, very quickly. We found an IKB. He gets one into the rear, which tracks him. He's now starting to lay in his team mark, and yes, he does get the kill this time, but he was spotted because there was a gap in the bushes. Now, it was actually not just a tank destroyer, it was also supposed to be technically a reconnaissance vehicle. It's very similar in many ways to the Hetzen, it's a very low profile vehicle. And according to the books, they actually were supposed to have actually built five. Uh, it was designed by Argos and built by Alket. Oh, he tracked himself as he went over the edge there. I think he went a little too fast and knocked the tracks off. Another reason to have track tensioning. Make sure your tracks are always tight because otherwise, if this happens, oh, he's on fire! He got a fire on the M6, which means he gets an arsenal. He's laying open into that IS. It's going right into the rear of the guy. And he's got that guy as well. So that's four kills now. He's opening up on the Caro. It's fantastic game. There's only one enemy left. It's the Caro, and he wins that one. So that's a very brief battle, but a very good result for the team. Well, that was a very brief battle indeed because it only lasted about four minutes long. 
But in that time, Beerwaller managed to get an ace tanker for the amount of spotting he did. He got a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage. He spotted a lot more than that. And he also got an arsonist because he set light to the M6, watched him go up in flames. A fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He actually ended up with five, which is one third of the enemy team. And also just one short of getting a top gun, which he might have got if he'd actually taken out a couple of the enemy tanks, which were taken out by his teammates after he spotted them for them. He also got a five for effect for doing more damage than the hit points for his own vehicle. Let's have a look at team score and see where he was. Well, look at that. He did get the highest damage in the game, but he didn't get the high caliber because I think that was below 20% of the enemy hit pool. 2,466 hit points of damage. Second highest damage went to the T3485M with 2,194. And the third highest damage went to the Tiger 1, 1,407. And I have to say that I think those guys who were sitting behind him were getting an easy battle because he was just spotting the enemy using his great camo and uh, then he was just allowing his teammates to plaster the enemy through the shots the moment he spotted something shell started hammering into them from his the teammates behind him and it really worked out well for him he managed to get five kills which is the highest number of kills in the game three kills went to the t3485m and the rest of the team had got one kill each and nobody on the enemy team got a kill that was a 15 nil victory in just over four minutes he also got the highest base XP in the game with 1,509 and it's difficult to get ace tankers in this tank destroyer mainly because it's a premium and people love it so much they play it a lot so you get an ace in an e25 you really have been rocking it and he certainly did in that game the next highest scorer didn't get over a thousand he only got 971 and that was the t3485m who got three kills and after that 710 went to the tiger one so incredibly good game by beer waller let's have a look at detail 34 shots fired in that game. Uh, you get 60 rounds in the E25, so pretty good going. He burned over half the ammunition, but uh, he really plastered the enemy. 24 shots, direct hits on the enemy, 19 penetrations. As I said, at long range, it does have a bit of dispersion, but if you get close to the enemy and you start blasting away with that gun, at uh, two seconds per shot, you are literally going to plaster them. And with 135 Alpha, you can do a lot of damage very, very quickly. The DPM is what gets this tank, uh, tank destroyer um, its reward. 2,466 hit points of damage, of which 599 were done at more than 300 meters. He spotted six enemy vehicles, damaged seven, killed five, 2,292 hit points of spotting assist. Yeah, he was acting more like a light tank than a tank destroyer in this one. 59,068 credits to the games, 26,581 from battle payments, 115,183 altogether. And after resupply of ammunition and consumables, he still came away with a massive profit of 72,640 credits. 1,509 XP, 453 for this being a premium vehicle. It is an expensive premium vehicle, but the cockroach is well worth it. 2,717 experience points altogether. Well, that was a great game. Let's have a look at the armor profile for this vehicle. Okay, here's the armor profile for the E25. It's fairly thin armor, actually, which is why it's so quick. It's actually got a top speed of 65 kilometers an hour. You can see that the front armor is 50 millimeters coming out at 96 because it's well angled. Again, 50 millimeters at the top as well, uh, coming out at 66. Uh, really, it's very thin fairly even over the, the top and the front you don't want to wait for the lower plate you want to wait for the upper plate if you can but avoid the mantlet avoid the gun altogether if you can get the sides of the vehicle it's very thin 30 millimeters coming up at 35 it's slightly angled there is a cupola 30 millimeters on that one again uh, if you can get the rear of the vehicle it's 30 millimeters again all standardized you see very even all the way around and of course if you can put an arty shell on top of it it's only 20 millimeters so just about any arty shell should be able to get a pen but the thing about the e25 is that it's very fast very difficult to pin down and the only thing you can do is pray and hope that he sits still just long enough to pump a few shells into the enemy and you can get a shell right onto his roof in that time it's got a very narrow arc of fire it's only 24 degrees either uh, 12 degrees either side which means that he has to stay still long enough for it to dial in so that's your opportunity to try and put a shell into him
If we look at the live version, yes, to see where you can pen. Well, any 75mm gun is just going to go straight through that armour. It is nicely angled at the sides, but it's flat over the track area. Um, yeah, any gel is going to go through. So ideally, you don't want to be seen. And that's where this very low size, very, uh, very good camo makes it uh, very difficult to take out. because You just don't see it most of the time uh, whilst he's pumping rounds into you. Anyway, let's have a look at the modules. Okay, well, looking at the modules, we can see the drivers up front on the right-hand side. Next to him on the left, uh, on his right, is an Amarak. Uh, there we can see a huge one. And there's also one on his left-hand side, right on the vehicle. They're 75 millimeter shells, so they're probably laying horizontally. And right next to the uh, driver, or just behind him, is the gunner who's aiming the vehicle. They're all cramped together because it's a very narrow very flat vehicle and he's got a gunner's uh, periscope just above him and then we've got the tank commander to the left of the guns we're looking at there and he's got the radio right next door to him the loader is actually sitting behind the gunner uh, feeding the shells into the um, um, to the breach and of course he's taking the shells out of those ready racks right next door to him the engine is sandwiched between two big fuel tanks there at the rear with a transmission right at the rear of the vehicle so uh, yes yeah, you can see anywhere you actually land a shell is more than likely going to hit something that's critical to the vehicle and get your module hit but we're not going to just leave you with one replay. We've got another one. Yes, Beer Waller sent in two at the same time. And, well, it's very nice when people do do that. Because if you get two replays, you can put them back to back. And then you get uh, a slightly bigger video. And that's helpful sometimes if the watchers are having lunch. And they can sit there, have lunch, watch a, a really good game. So let's get into it straight away. And the second battle is on the defending team of Steps Assault. Now this should be interesting because it's only going to last 10 minutes. And either the enemy's going to capture the cap or they're going to either kill all of the team. And it's Bill Waller's job to actually make sure that he doesn't die and that all the enemy tanks die instead. And this comet is being a bit of a nuisance he's stopping Beer Waller from getting to a firing position where he can start getting his gun on the targets. It's a bit open in this area. Oh, the Comet's actually thanking him for some reason. I think that's more of our sarcastic statement. But it looks like he's going up to the hills behind the normal cap area. So he's going to try and stop the enemy from approaching down the east side of the map. Well, he's got a firing position and a T3045M already gets close, gets a hit into the tracks. That one hit the engine bay. That dispersion at long range is... Oh, he's trapped him. Good. Now he's a dead duck. He slowed down and now he's dead. And that's... Oh, what the rack? Blew the turret clean off. Now, unfortunately, the Kemet who was sitting right alongside him just got taken out by the enemy T-34-1. And we're trying to get shots on that combo, but he's not giving us much to work with. We can only see the turret, and now we've lost sight of him altogether, so it's probably best not to blow and blast any ammo away, because you've only got 60 rounds in total. You need to make the best use of them. Okay, there's the T-34-1. Took out the Kemet. Okay, we're using the premium ammo now. And oh, he did hit something there. I think he got a fuel tank for the front. And again, that guy's in danger. He could go up in flames. Yes, he has. And there's the kill shot. It wasn't enough to last this, but he hit set like him. He's firing blind over in that direction. And he kills the Cromwell. Even though he couldn't see him, he guessed where he might be. So, after just a brief battle so far, he's got three kills on the enemy, including that spectacular Amarak on the T-34, where the turret went flying. Huge distance. He's platooned with two others in the game, the VK-3002D, the one with the 88mm gun, and the Tiger-1 as well. Tiger-1's gone up north. The VK's ahead of us at the moment. He's spotting for us. Weapon Traker takes a hit. Just lay into this guy with the standard ammo. 
He's got no HU to, to fire at him, but it looks like these rounds are hitting the target. Oh, no, he's moved now. And we're pulling back because the 59.16 has actually got down to the east of us. We can't get a shot in there. We're far better off on this position here. Yeah, with 38 millimeter gun, the VK 38 can be quite effective. But I think he's actually got the 75 millimeter gun there because it's the long, thin one rather than the short, fat one. The 88 millimeter gun is really devastating because it's like a 90 millimeter gun, really, in terms of performance. Okay, we can see the ARL. The 5916's gone down into the corner and he's definitely going to die. Chased in there by a T-52. We tried to go around the corner there a bit awkwardly. Caught the corner rock. And our VK's now pushing on the enemy. And he's found the enemy E-25. He's pinning him there. And we're coming in to try and get the kill. Oh! Now we've got an AR roll now. So we're going to make this guy pay for it. Because we haven't been spotted by him. That one hit the track for bounce stuff. That one penned. No. And that's it. Okay, well, he has gone down. And in the end, he went down to the Hellcat. Okay, so we're really, really doing well on this side of the map. There's very few enemy left. There's only two left now. We've killed all the enemy on the west side of the map. But there's only the E-25 and the Excalibur. And this is... Get, yes, he gets the E-25. This is going to be a very quick battle, another four minute battle, or four minutes and a few seconds, only the Excalibur remaining. Okay, he's going to take some damage here if he gets close to the Excalibur, but it's going to be worth it. When he gets some ram damage, not ideal for the E25, but he set likes to the guy, and the kill shot comes in from the T-52, who's very aggressive, and he's actually landed on top of the vehicle. <laughs> That's a bit too affectionate. Must be the breeding season for T-52s because he was all over that 5916 and then when he had the chance he climbed on top of the Excalibur as well. Uh, yes, I think he was a little too frisky because he also climbed on top of Beerwaller which could have caused problems. But it was another ace tanker game for Beerwaller in the E-25. He got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 13. He got a demolition expert because he blew the T-3485M. Well, the turret literally took off. Tried to imitate a T-72 when it did. And he got a fighter badge for taking out at least four tanks. He did get four exactly. As well as a fire for effect for doing more damage than hit points to his own vehicle. Well, we can see that when it came to damage, he actually got the second highest damage in the game. His platoon mate in the uh, in the Tiger 1 managed to get 3,555 hit points. So on the west side of the map, he was really pummeling the enemy. Uh, the second highest damage went to Beer Waller with 3,433. And the third highest damage in the game went to the T-29 who got 1,976. When it came to kills, he shared it with the Tiger 1. His platoon mate managed to get four. He managed to get four. Uh, between them, they had the, the highest score. The second highest score went to that T-52 and the T-3485. Both got two kills each. So they came in joint second place, you could say. And when it came to the other platoon mate, the VK-3002D, I think he did get a fair bit of spotting, but he didn't get any kills out of that one. Uh, when it came to base XP, it's Beer Waller, because, of course, he was uh, uh, hitting um, the enemy uh, tanks en uh, well, masse, as well as uh, getting good uh, spotting on them for his teammates. 1,468 went to Beer Waller, 1,316 went to the Tiger 1, 766 to the T-29. So, big difference between that guy and the top two guys who were really rocking it during that game. Beer Waller fired 41 rounds in this one, so two-thirds of his ammunition, 30 direct hits on the enemy, and 25 penetrations. 3,433, of which 1,715 were at more than 300 meters, so a fair bit of damage done at long range, but he did get some short-range shots in as well. One hit received, it was a penetration, that was the Excalibur right at the end. Three enemy vehicles spotted, seven enemy vehicles damaged, four killed, and... Whoop, didn't mean to do that. 618 hit points of spawning assist in that game as well. 
59,051 credits for the game, 26,573 from battle payments, 115,150 altogether. And after repair, ammunition, resupply, and consumables, he actually came away with a profit of 65,019 credits from this battle. 1,468 XP, 4,404 from personal missions payout, 440 for this being a premium vehicle, and took away 7,046 experience points altogether. So two great games in the E25. It is kind of expensive, yep, and not everyone can afford it, but the cockroach, as it's become known, is quite deadly in battles, and if you can get to handle the fact that it has got a rather fast traverse, so some people who play this little tank destroyer find that they turn to, to face the enemy and they overcorrect and they have to go past and correct back again onto the target but once you get that gun pumping those shells out it can be truly deadly to the enemy and you saw how beer waller just aimed it down the line where he thought that comet was or not the comet rather the cromwell and it was still there and he just kept pumping those rounds in so yes if, if you just uh keep pushing those rounds out eventually you're going to do some severe damage to the enemy it might take a few rounds to take out an enemy tank but uh, at 135 and with that decent penetration in fact it's a much better penetration with the premium rounds than it is with the uh, um with the standard uh you are going to penetrate most enemy vehicles including the heavies so uh, well done to be awarded two ace tankers back to back and uh, very quick battles as well look at the detail on this one four minutes and 54 seconds or 55 by battle duration and uh, yes i think the previous one let's have a quick look at that if we look at the the previous one it's four minutes 10 seconds so he's really mastering these very fast games indeed where they wipe the enemy out uh, before they even know what's going on so well done to beer waller hope you enjoyed the battles if you did please give the video a like do subscribe to our channel leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm and thank you for watching